It's a very, to me, it's a very restrictive form of bill. But the campaign that had been going on for several years to change the law in this country, the main uh, supporters like Dignity and Dine and uh, Soares and so on, we were hoping that at least, well, at least 250 members of parliament would support the bill. You see, in, in this country, in the UK, this campaign for changing the law to make uh, doctor-assisted suicide or voluntary euthanasia possible, it's been going on since 1935. The first right to die society in the world, the um, Voluntary Euthanasia Society, was established in that year. And the main people in support of the VES in the early days were doctors, one of them was a physician to the royal family, and also local clergymen. Nowadays, the opposition to changing the law in this country comes mainly from religious forces and also from the medical establishment.
and then a third group opposing any change in the law, not so um, vocal as the two I've mentioned, are various disability groups. Um, because some disabled people feel that, I hate the expression, but they already are kind of second-class citizens because they're in a wheelchair or they're blind. I've come out here today because I feel passionately that we cannot legalise assisted suicide. Before you know it, it's saying to disabled people, it's saying to terminally ill people that this is a treatment option, that it's an acceptable option to end your life if you are at the end of your life or if you are uh, disabled or ill. And I don't think that's a message that we should be giving. I also think that the bill is full of uh, loopholes. Uh, it has not very strong safeguards and we go down a very dangerous path once we start to legalising it and saying having doctors kill patients is an acceptable way to go. It seems very compelling to vote for choice. The people that want this bill say it's all about choice. Do you know what? People don't have choice in their life at the moment. People don't have choice over how they die. And what I mean by that is you know, there's, there's a waiting list of 13 people to one bed in a hospice. Uh, the Cancer Drugs Fund has just been halved. And that means that people who need drugs to extend their life are being denied them. It means that most people want to die at home, but they have to die in hospital. We are not providing people with decent end-of-life care. And until we have that for everybody, let's not even have this discussion. And instead, I would say to the campaigners for the suicide, plough your resources and your PR money and all your slick campaigns and put that into ensuring good end-of-life care for everybody. I think that the groups in Switzerland who are willing to help foreigners, like Dignitas in Zurich, Life Circle in Basel, and X International in Bern, they are motivated by basic human rights. I think it was in 2006 that the European Court of Human Rights made a judgment in the case of Diane Pretty, who was a lady from this country suffering from motor neurone disease who went to the European Court. And the European Court said, and I can't remember the exact words, but to paraphrase it, that in an age in which there is um, growing um, life expectancy and um, better and better medical treatment for people, that people should not be forced to hang on in an undignified manner if this is something which is against their own personal beliefs and uh, principles. Now, none of us came into this world by choice. Um, we don't know quite what happens when we do die. I'm a humanist in my, I hate the word belief because it's not a belief humanism, but um, I have an open mind about whether there's an afterlife or not. Um, so therefore I think one should be in control as to how you can end your life when you've got justifications for it, such as serious medical problems and advancing age.